what in the name of Nicholas Latifi happened at the Australian Grand Prix. There were four red flags, three standing starts, Latte Boy went full jihad, Charles Leclerc fucked it, Alex Albon fucked it, Kevin Magnussen fucked it, Max Verstappen almost fucked it, Spanish domestic terrorism, French domestic terrorism, Lance Stroll was being a spastic, as per, a fan in the grandstands got hit by a piece of flying debris, and the Australian Grand Prix themselves were summoned to the stewards. I've never seen that before, where the actual Grand Prix is called to the stewards. And that was because some people thought it was a good idea to walk onto the track as the cars were crossing the finish line. And if all of that wasn't enough chaos for the weekend, guess who showed up? Guess who crawled out of the shadows? I'll give you a clue. They were responsible for the most disgusting moment in sporting history. And no, I'm not talking about Paula Radcliffe taking a big shit in the middle of a marathon. I'm talking about Abu Dhabi 21. Because the man, the myth, the massive, Michael Massey returned to the F1 paddock. And he was welcomed with open arms. Not really. ESPN F1 posted a picture saying Michael Massey makes his first appearance in the F1 paddock since Abu Dhabi 2021. And somebody replied with a meme, Return of the King. Perfectly reasonable banter. And then Team LH enters the chat. King of cheating, founder of the Human Era Champion, what a legend. Return of the thief, you mean. Return of the cheat, I don't know how he can show his face. The return of the cheater, the king of race fixing, hashtag F1 fixed, hashtag Abu Dhabi scandal, hashtag Human Era Champion, blah, blah, blah. Yes, of course, they had a mental breakdown. They always have a mental breakdown. That's what you expect from the lunatics on Twitter. But what about the mainstream media? How did they respond? Because remember, they're supposed to be unbiased, impartial. They're not supposed to show any human emotion, like Jos Verstappen, just dead inside. Well, according to these headlines, Ted Kravitz questions why Michael Massey returned to F1 paddock in Australia. Sky F1 pundit lashes out at Michael Massey as race director attends Australian GP. Ted Kravitz tore into Michael Massey for appearing at the Australian GP. Ted Kravitz blasts Michael Massey for F1 paddock return. Right, okay, nobody got blasted. Nobody tore into anybody. Here's what Ted Kravitz actually said. Um, Massey, Michael Massey, the ex-FI race director, has been in the paddock for the first time since that fateful day in December 2021. And he's been glad handing, he's been saying hello to drivers, hasn't been saying hello to the Mercedes people. I don't really, I mean, I do want to get into it, you know I do but I won't. What, 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 what's he doing? I mean, what, what's he doing in Australia is he's in charge of supercars, the V8 supercars, the Australian, Australian touring cars now. But what's he doing coming back into the Formula One paddock? Uh, some rumor that Formula One want him back because Niels Vittich Niels needs help on the FIA race direction side. But that's not going to happen. Uh, I don't know. I, I, what's Michael Massey doing in the paddock? All right, that's it. So he's not blasting Michael Massey and he's not tearing into him, but he is doing summer and I can't quite figure out what. It's almost as if he really wants to tell us summer, but he knows he can't. So then the question is, what does he want to tell us and why can't he say it? Well, I have conducted some investigative journalism, which explains all of this, but we're going to have to go down a bit of a rabbit hole and it's going to get a bit wild and I'm going to have to connect a few dots, so I'll make a diagram for you all to follow along, okay? Are you ready for the diagram? Let's fucking do this. Right, the first dot is Michael Massey returns to the Formula One paddock. Ted Kravitz is weirdly uncomfortable about it, but won't say why. Donald Trump arrives in New York to face the prosecution, and Russia agrees to adopt Chinese currency. All of these things happened within days of each other, within hours. Now, let's lay out a few more things that happened. Crofty defended Michael Massey during the live broadcast of the race, saying, and I quote, No matter what your allegiances were in 2021, you have to remember he's still a human being. Paul Deresta, who we know is an agent of the CCP, 
gets fired from Sky F1 and then launches a spy balloon over America. A fan in the grandstands gets hit by a piece of flying debris, China shrinks the black guy in the Star Wars poster, FBI informants went undercover, disguised as MAGA supporters during the Capitol riot on January 6th. Sky F1 is owned by Comcast, which is an American media company. People storm onto the track as the cars are crossing the finish line. Another Russian oligarch has been found dead in mysterious circumstances, which makes it 32 Russian businessmen who have been murdered or committed suicide over the past 12 months. Jack Daniels teams up with a bunch of drag queens in a marketing campaign for their shit whiskey, Budweiser puts a tranny on the side of a beer can, and Russia imported medium-range surface-to-air missile systems into Ukraine months before the official invasion. This happened on Sunday the 12th of December 2021, the same day as the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. So the only reasonable conclusion we can draw from all of this is that there is currently a shadow war taking place right now between America and the newly formed Russian Chinese Federation. That would explain why Russia adopted Chinese currency to weaken the strength of the US dollar. Michael Massey is a Russian asset who created Abu Dhabi 21 as a distraction from the impending invasion. Crofty, who defended Massey, has been blackmailed by the same people who are killing all the Russian businessmen. The people who stormed onto the track at the end of the race were FBI informants. China wants to shrink all the black people with biological manipulation devices. The piece of debris that hit a fan in the grandstands was wreckage from Paul DeResta's spy balloon. The government's pouring stuff into the alcohol to turn everybody into a tranny. And Ted Kravitz was trying to warn us all about this, but he can't say anything because Sky F1 is bought and owned by the American mainstream media. And the American mainstream media is currently using the Donald Trump prosecution to distract everybody from the decline of American culture, the lack of national security, the people who should really be in prison, the impending thermonuclear war, and the fact that Ferrari has only scored 26 points in the first three races of the season. It's all connected. These lines are solid. Solid. Uh, right, I just blacked out for a second there. Oh.